Welcome back, boys and girls. This is the read aloud for lesson 12. And this chapter in The Wind in the Willows is called The Return of Toad, part one. Enjoy. The rat put out a neat little brown paw, gripped Toad firmly by the scruff of the neck, and gave a great hoist and a pull. The waterlogged toad came up slowly but surely over the edge of the hole. At last he stood safe and sound in the hall, streaked with mud and weed, and with the water streaming off of him. Oh, ratty, he cried, I've been through such times since I saw you last. Toad, said the water rat firmly, you go off upstairs at once and take off that old cotton rag that looks as if it once belonged to a washerwoman. Clean yourself and put on some of my clothes. Now be off. I'll have something to say to you later. Toad was at first inclined to do some talking back. He had had enough of being ordered about. However, he caught sight of himself in the looking glass with the bonnet perched over one eye, and he changed his mind. He went very quickly upstairs to the rat's dressing room. There he had a thorough wash and changed his clothes. A looking glass is the mirror. By the time they came down again, luncheon was on the table. While they ate, Toad told the rat about his adventures. When at last Toad had talked himself to a standstill, there was silence for a while. And then Rat said, Now, Toady, on your own admission, you have been handcuffed, imprisoned, starved, chased, terrified out of your life, insulted, jeered at and flung into the water by a woman too don't you see what a fool you've been making of yourself and all because you stole a motor car toad heaved a deep sigh and said very humbly quite right ratty i can't quite see that but now i'm going to be a good toad as for motor cars i'm sorry he said quite right ratty i can quite see that but now I'm going to be a good toad. As for motor cars, I've not been so keen on them for quite a while. I have something else in mind, but all in good time. Let's have our coffee and then I'll stroll down to Toad Hall. Stroll down to Toad Hall, cried the rat, greatly excited. Do you mean to say you haven't heard? Heard what? said Toad, turning rather pale. Do you mean to tell me, shouted the rat, that you've heard nothing about the stoats and weasels? What? The wild wooders? cried Toad, trembling in every limb. What have they been doing? And now they've been take and now they've been and taken Toad Hall? Continued the rat. Toad leaned his elbows on the table, and a larger tear and a large tear welled up in each of his eyes. Go on, Ratty, he murmured presently. Tell me all. When you got into that that trouble of yours, said the rat. Toad merely nodded. Well, it was a good deal talked about, explained the rat. The river bankers stuck up for you, but the wildwood animals said it served you right, and they went about saying you would never come back again. Toad nodded once more. The mole and the badger insisted that you would come back again somehow. Toad began to sit up in his chair again and to smirk a little. They were so sure that you would never be seen again, continued the rat that they arranged to move their things into Toad Hall. And so, one dark night, a band of weasels crept silently up the driveway. Simultaneously, a body of desperate ferrets took possession of the kitchen garden, the backyard, and offices, while a company of skirmishing stoats occupied the conservatory and the billiard room. Uh, this is a picture of a ferret, and they are closely related to weasels. The mole and the badger were sitting by the fire when those bloodthirsty villains broke down the doors and rushed in upon them. They were unarmed and taken by surprise. Those two poor faithful creatures were turned out into the cold. The wild wooders have been living in Toad Hall ever since, concluded the rat. Oh, have they, said Toad, getting up and seizing a stick. I'll see about that. It's no good, Toad, called the rat after him. You'd better come back and sit down. You'll only get into trouble. But the toad was off. He marched rapidly down the road, fuming and muttering to himself till he got near his front gate. 
At that moment, there popped up from behind the palings a long yellow ferret with a gun. Palings are fences made out of pointed stakes. Who comes there? said the ferret sharply. Stuff and nonsense, said Toad very angrily. What do you mean by talking like that to me? Come out of that at once or I'll... The ferret said never a word, but he brought his gun up to his shoulder. Toad prudently dropped flat in the road and bang, a bullet whistled over his head. The startled Toad scrambled to his feet and scampered off as hard as he could. He went back very crestfallen and told the water rat. What did I tell you, said the rat. They've got sentries posted and they're all armed. You must just wait. Still, Toad was not inclined to give in all at once. So he got out the boat and set off rowing up the river to where the garden front of Toad Hall came down to the waterside. Arriving within sight of his old home, he surveyed the land cautiously. All seemed very peaceful and quiet. He could see the whole front of Toad Hall glowing in the evening sunshine. He would try the boathouse first, he thought. Very warily, he paddled up to the mouth of the creek and was just passing under the bridge when crash! A great stone dropped from above, smashed through the bottom of the boat. The boat filled and sank and Toad found himself struggling in deep water. It will be your head next time, Toady, the stoats called out to him. The indignant toad swam to shore while they laughed and laughed. The toad retraced his weary way on foot and related his disappointing experiences to the water rat once more. Well, what did I tell you, said the rat very crossly. And now look here, see what you've been and done. Lost me my boat that I was so fond of. The toad saw at once how foolishly he had acted. He admitted his errors and made a full apology to Rat. Ratty, I see that I have been a headstrong and a willful toad. Henceforth, I will take no action without your advice and full approval. If that is really so, said the good-natured Rat, already appeased, then my advice to you is to have some supper. In addition, do nothing until we have seen the mole and the badger and taken their advice. Oh, ah, yes, of course, the mole and the badger, said Toad. What has become of them, the dear fellows? Well, may you ask, said the rat reproachfully. While you were riding about the country in expensive motor cars, those two poor devoted animals were trying every which way to get your property back for you. You don't deserve to have such loyal friends. I, I'm an ungrateful beast, I know, sobbed Toad, shedding bitter tears. Let me go out and find them out into the cold, dark night. Hold on a bit. Surely I heard the chink of dishes on a tray. Supper's here at last. Hooray! Come on, Ratty. They had just finished their meal when there came a heavy knock at the door. Who do you think is at the door? Toad was nervous, but the rat, nodding mysteriously at him, went straight up to the door and opened it, and in walked Mr. Badger. Mr. Badger looked decidedly bedraggled. He came solemnly up to Toad, shook him by the paw, and said, Welcome home, Toad. Alas, this is a poor homecoming. Then he turned his back on him and helped himself to a large slice of pie. Thank you for listening, boys and girls.